At StarCast 3, held around a month before this video will be uploaded, Dean Malenko held a Q&A session where he revealed he is suffering from Parkinson's disease. It was terrible to hear, but the Iceman's mind is as sharp as ever as he has been giving help to the AEW superstars on their journey to the big leagues. It's also quite sad that hardly none of the normal news websites or your usual breed of wrestling YouTubers really reported on the news, as if seemingly the contributions that Dean Malenko has made over the years to wrestling isn't glamorous enough or recent enough to warrant a click. I understand Dean Malenko may not be a name many younger fans are familiar with nowadays, but us older fans know all too well that Dean Malenko wasn't just one of the toughest wrestlers during the mid-90s, but he was also one of the most technically gifted yet underappreciated superstars of the generation. Let's waste no further time in giving Dean Malenko some well-deserved time in the spotlight as we look at his career highlights. Real name Dean Simon, Malenko was born on August 4th 1960. He was also born into a wrestling family with his father Boris Malenko, real name Lawrence Simon, being a well respected figure in the world of wrestling. As tensions grew during the Cold War, Boris worked in the early 60s as the great Boris Malenko, which was actually a play on words. Malenko is Russian for Little, so his name translated to the great Boris Little. The Malenko name, though, would stick throughout the careers of both of Boris's sons, Joe Malenko and Dean Malenko. Joe and Dean were trained by their father in the mid-70s. Dean started his career in wrestling by becoming a referee in the Tampa area before briefly working in the WWF as a ref in the mid-80s. Dean wanted to be more than a referee though, and in the late 80s, he began travelling all over the world to sharpen his wrestling skills in many different styles. He even tagged up with his brother Joe in the late 80s and early 90s. Joe retired though in 1992, and Dean travelled back to Tampa to work in singles competition. In 1994, Dean was signed to Eastern Championship Wrestling just before the company would rename itself as Extreme Championship Wrestling. Dean was actually involved in the infamous tournament to crown the new NWA champion that Shane Douglas eventually won, leading to Shane throwing the belt to the floor and calling the NWA a dead promotion. Dean lost to Shane Douglas in the semi-finals of this very tournament that pretty much led to the creation of Extreme Championship Wrestling. Now with the nickname The Shooter, Dean Malenko went on to defeat Two Cold Scorpio to win the ECW TV title on November 4th 1994. From here, Malenko, Chris Benoit and Shane Douglas would create the Triple Threat faction. This, of course, was the very first iteration of the group. Malenko became a double champion in ECW when he and Chris Benoit defeated Sabu and the Tasmaniac for the ECW tag titles. Soon, however, Dean Malenko dropped the TV title back to Two Cold Scorpio and the tag belts were lost to the public enemy in April of 1995. In mid-1995 also, Dean worked quite a bit in Japan, even entering the best of the Super Junior 2 tournament where he worked against the likes of Black Tiger and Brian Pullman. Upon returning to ECW in 95, Dean Malenko would become a two-time TV champion when he defeated Eddie Guerrero for the gold on July 21st. Malenko and Guerrero would continue to feud over the TV title and the good news is, these very matches have been uploaded in their entirety on the WWE Network. Every Malenko vs Guerrero match was exceptionally good in ECW, so once you're done here, make sure you have a look. Someone though who was having a look at the time was Eric Bischoff, the executive producer of WCW. Bischoff was so impressed by the Guerrero vs Malenko feud that he offered both men contracts to begin work in WCW, along with offering Chris Benoit a contract also. On August 26, 95, Guerrero and Malenko had their final ECW match, a 2 out of 3 falls classic that ended in a draw. The ECW audience gave Malenko and Guerrero an incredible standing ovation after the match, showing their gratitude for the two as Malenko and Guerrero gave an emotional farewell speech. 
Dean Malenko and Eddie Guerrero would continue to cross paths, whether it was against each other or by each other's side. Dean made his way to WCW in September of 95. He debuted as a bad guy and became known as the Iceman because of his stone cold demeanour and no frills attitude and eventually Dean was also known as the man of a thousand holds. His first matches in WCW were mainly against his friends Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit so he had an opportunity here to have good matches with people he was comfortable with. WCW also had a working agreement with New Japan Pro Wrestling so Dean was able to take himself back to Japan and work more shows there. Much of Dean's 1996 included matches for New Japan Pro Wrestling but this doesn't mean he had a bad time in WCW, far from it. On May 2nd, 96, Malenko defeated Shinjiro Otani for the WCW Cruiserweight Championship. He held the title for two months, making successful defences against the likes of Rey Mysterio Jr and Disco Inferno before losing the title to Mysterio on the July 8th edition of Nitro. He got the title back though when he defeated Rey for his second WCW Cruiserweight Championship at Halloween Havoc in 96. Malenko would drop the title to Ultimo Dragon at Starcade 96, but he reclaimed the belt from Dragon at Clash of the Champions 34 in January of 97, giving Malenko his third reign as WCW Cruiserweight Champion. The NWO were becoming a huge part of WCW though, and after only holding the title for around a month, Malenko dropped the Cruiserweight title to 6 at Super Brawl 7. Due to Eddie Guerrero inadvertently costing Malenko the title at Super Brawl, the two men entered into a feud. Their matches here were good, especially in comparison to other matches presented on WCW at the time, but I feel their ECW encounters were better. Guerrero was US Champion at the time and Malenko was able to win the gold from Guerrero at Uncensored 97. Dean held on to the US title for around 3 months before eventually dropping the title to Jeff Jarrett on the June 9th 1997 episode of Nitro. Malenko refocused on the cruiserweight division to end out 97, working again against Eddie Guerrero at Starcade 97. This Starcade match, the opening bout of the pay per view, is definitely worth a watch. Guerrero plays the heel character so well throughout the whole duration of the bout. To end 1997, Dean Malenko was voted the number one wrestler in the world by Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Dean got involved in a highly entertaining feud with Chris Jericho, something I have spoke about previously but it would be criminal to talk about Malenko's career and not mention his work with Chris Jericho in WCW. Jericho began boasting that he was the man of a thousand and four holds and in one of WCW's greatest ever segments Jericho pulled out a list of his one thousand and four holds and began reading them to the crowd, many of said holds being arm bars. This all led to a showdown between Malenko and Jericho at Uncensored 98 for the Cruiserweight title. After a long and exciting match, Jericho forced Dean to submit to the Lion Tamer. After the match, the normally calm Malenko lost his cool and he told Mean Gene Okerlund that he was going home. Dean disappeared from WCW for two months while Jericho continued to taunt him on TV. Slamboree 1998 came along and Jericho held a battle royal for a shot at his cruiserweight title. The winner of the battle royal would immediately face Jericho afterwards. Cyclope won the match after Juventud Guerrero shook his hand and jumped out of the ring, leading Cyclope to take his mask off. The crowd went totally nuts when Dean Malenko was revealed under the mask. It was time for Jericho to pay for all the taunting he had done during Malenko's absence and boy Malenko made him pay. Malenko defeated Jericho to win his fourth and final WCW Cruiserweight Championship. Dean was forced to vacate the belt however as he didn't earn the title shot as himself, as dumb as that sounds. Later in the year Dean Malenko joined the Four Horsemen. Dean, I felt, was a perfect fit for the faction, more so than Mongo McMichael anyway. The Horsemen feuded with other factions in WCW but mainly they went up against the NWO which, of course, meant they didn't win half as much as what they should have. 
Going into 1999, Malenko and Benoit, another member of the Horsemen, feuded mainly with the West Texas Rednecks. I always felt, for some reason, that Dean Malenko was a horseman for a long time, but looking back now, he wasn't even part of the group for a year. Dean was a horseman for around 8 months. After the horsemen disbanded, Malenko joined Shane Douglas's faction, The Revolution. The idea behind The Revolution was that they were a group of younger superstars who were never given a fair chance to be main eventers in WCW while always giving older, more established wrestlers these top spots. The idea behind the group held some truth for sure. All members of the Revolution were friends from their original ECW days as the group featured Shane Douglas, Dean Malenko, Perry Saturn and Chris Benoit. The Revolution mainly feuded with the Jersey Triad, the West Texas Rednecks, the First Family and the Filthy Animals. Dean Malenko's last match in WCW was strange and, to this day, I can't make my mind up if this was a botch or if it was another Vince Russo idea. Generally, the world thinks it was a botch, but I have my own theory. Anyway, let me explain. In the opening match at Sold Out 2000, Dean Malenko worked against Billy Kidman in a catch as catch con match. This meant if your feet touched the floor outside, you lost the match. By instinct, Dean rolled out of the ring, seemingly forgetting the rules of the match, and therefore, he lost. He was surprised afterwards, as were the WCW commentators. As stated earlier, it's been generally agreed online that Dean made a mistake here and messed up the finish, but hear me out. This was the first of three matches that Billy Kidman would be involved in on this night, so it would make sense for his first match here to be over quickly, to try and save some of his energy for later in the night. Even Mike Tanay mentions this during the match. His second match was a bunkhouse brawl, and his third match was inside a cage, so logical booking here says get the first match over with as quick as possible and save yourself for the later matches. The second thing is, there are loads of ways to restart a match. If Shawn Michaels vs Vader can be restarted a few times in the main event of Summerslam, then I don't think fans would mind too much if the opening match of Sold Out 2000 was restarted after a little bit of mic work. Kidman could grab the mic and say he wants to beat Malenko himself, Malenko could grab the mic and challenge Kidman to round 2, there's so many ways that this could have been fixed if it was indeed a botch. Watch it for yourself though and draw your own conclusions. But yeah, it's a shame Dean's WCW run ended this way, but still, he got off the sinking ship just in the nick of time. After sold out, Dean Malenko, Perry Saturn, Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit left WCW after a dispute with management. Just two weeks after his last WCW match, Dean showed up on the January 31st edition of Raw is War, sitting at ringside along with the others who left due to the management dispute. All in all, Dean didn't have the same kind of success in the WWF as he did in WCW, but he was successful in the WWF's light heavyweight division, winning the title twice. When the Radicals broke away from each other, Malenko entered into yet another feud with Eddie Guerrero, but this time it also involved China, who Malenko blamed on causing tensions between the two. Dean was scheduled to work against the Godfather, but instead of working the match, he decided to take one of the Godfather's ladies. This led to a gimmick change for Dean Malenko, where he was now known as Double Ho Seven, a parody of James Bond. He would try to seduce Lita, which in turn led to a feud with the Hardy Boys. Dean would also feud with Jacqueline and Ivory during this time, but soon enough he was back to teaming up with old radical teammate Perry Saturn. As the Invasion storyline was starting in the WWF, Malenko quietly disappeared from TV screens. Dean became a road agent for the WWE, a role that he would keep for the next 18 years. Dean Malenko and the WWE parted ways on April 26, 2019. Dean joined All Elite Wrestling on May 24, 2019 as a senior producer. 
He is most definitely an invaluable asset for sure, with a lifetime of experience working in the old Big 3 promotions and also having an extensive stay in Japan. It's safe to say that having Dean Malenko on your team will do nothing but make your product a better, more focused show.